This time I'm going to be replacing the rear shock on my 2010 Nissan Rogue. Now if you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, check out my channel content for more, and hey, have fun. Rear shock on the 2010 Nissan Rogue was making a little bit of a clunky clunky noise and it was going over bumps. I mean, you can see in the video that it was really, really, really blown. And that was because the fluid had leaked from the shock. But what do you expect after 10 years in service? I mean, these are shocks. So it is cold outside, so I am going to have to brace for that. And you'll probably see me with my breath outside in the cold. So without further ado, let's get to it. I am now in the garage. It's about 20 degrees in here on a frigid day. And so I have to have the heater on, so I'm sorry about the heater in the background. I'm going to start by loosening this 18 millimeter bolt, and then on the opposing side there's an 18 millimeter nut on this side, and I'm just going to loosen this first before I remove it. Just to show you, that's the 18 millimeter nut on the opposing side. 18 millimeter socket. 18 millimeter deep socket. Use a long reach flex head ratchet on the first side, vintage craftsman ratchet on the opposing side to hold it. Oh, okay, I need a breaker bar. Reaching to a breaker bar, I'm going to loosen that nut. I switched back to the ratchet and now I can loosen up, making sure that the bottom of both bolts and the nut are free. Sweet. Sweet. I can move to the top part of the shock. The upper portion, there's an 18 millimeter bolt right here and a nut that's retained in place. I don't know if you can see the nut, but there's a nut that's inside retained in place. And then on this side, there's that 18 millimeter bolt that I have to remove. So that's the bolt right there that needs to be removed. I'm gonna use my long reach flex head and an extension to get that bolt out. So I'm looking in the camera because I can't really see or else I'd be blocking your angle. So I'm going to reach above here, and right there I'm on the fastener, there we go, sweet, and you could take a breaker bar, but this one seems to be coming free, bottom half of the control arm. I actually need to apply the jack to the bottom half because it's kind of a part of the suspension. So we just have to apply some load to this, at least get it up a little bit, and it'll also help us get that bolt out. Now back to the lower part of the shock here. Left the other one up there because I'm gonna use a wrench to remove this nut, or I can just remove it by hand. And then I have this other Craftsman ratchet that I can remove it with. So now I can remove this. And that it really, this is really what it feels like, as I said. I mean, this should be free. So I'm gonna remove that bolt at the bottom. So now with the socket and ratchet all in there still, I can continue removing the top part of the shock. So you can kind of see it right there ratchet over the subframe. Okay. Now I'm going to hold the shock, put my hand up here, grab the bolt, and that's the bolt. Now the shock can come down just like that and out. You can see this shock was actually leaking at the bottom. I mean this bushing as well is doing no justice and this shock was leaking let's see oh it seems to maybe be working so i just compressed the shock let me see 
Yeah, this shock is no good because it's fully compressed now. So I'm gonna go grab the new shock and do the comparison. This is the new shock, this is the old shock. As you can probably tell, it still hasn't been, uh, it still hasn't returned back to normal. I gotta install this on the car just to make sure the, uh, the bolt goes right in to both the bottom and the top. This top portion right here, because it is slightly bigger, goes on the top and the bottom half being smaller is gonna go on the bottom. I'm just gonna set that up in there and line them up. And I wish I could hold this, but I can't because I just can't hold it like this because where the camera is placed and everything else is. So I'm going to hold it there and then put the bolt in. Flip it over the subframe of the rear. Find the hole. There we go. Find the hole for the other side. Oh yeah, now it's going in. Right here. It's in. So that's the bolt right there. You can twist it. And I can't pull it out. I'm bringing back this bolt here. And the reason I didn't cut this yet is because I'm gonna cut it and then slide the bolt in going back. So I'm gonna do that and catch it. Let me get it lined up. Let's take some snips. Okay, I feel it moving. There we go. Now I can take the nut and reinstall it on this side, just like that. Using the torque wrench, I'm going to torque it to 89 foot-pounds. In through the top and get it on the fastener. Okay. And then I can torque it down. Good at the top. Oh, thank you, Nissan. I love that design. And then here on the bottom, I'm going to just tighten down this nut and bolt as far as I can. So I can torque it down again. Using the shallow 18 millimeter, I'm gonna hook that to the torque wrench. So I can torque the nut side down instead of the bolt side. There we go. I'm hooked on using the deep well that I had, 18 millimeter. I'm gonna hook that to my half inch drive Craftsman ratchet, vintage Craftsman, to hold it in place. Okay. Okay, now that it's torqued down and everything else is torqued down, we can verify everything and uh, we're good to go. It really wasn't that difficult to replace, minus the fact that it was only 20 degrees outside and inside the garage it was like 21 degrees. So there was not much of a difference because I had to have the heater on and the heater wasn't doing much justice either, so you can kind of tell I was cold. Other than that, it was a really simple process altogether to do. You have that 18 millimeter nut that you have to reach over the rear cross member to get to, and the 18 millimeter nut and bolt at the bottom that you have to remove, and that's it. I mean, I don't know how much more simple this technically could be. I mean, the closer thing to this would be a full-size truck or a Chevy S10 or something along those lines because they have the shock mounted here and here. You just pull out those bolts and there you go. Hopefully this helps. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and have fun. Oh wait, I, I didn't say like, have fun. Did I say like? Oh, all right. Well, I'll link the playlist right here and don't forget to subscribe.